welcome back to the studio tonight. So, I'm kind of continuing my theme with birds, and uh, I'm kind of getting into a bigger bird this time. The uh, great blue heron. It's a fantastic bird. We have them around here. I hope you have them where you live. They're big. They're uh, prehistoric looking, and uh, I see them down by the water, fishing in the rocks. I actually see them on a, in the fields and in the golf courses around here, hunting for uh mice or moles or something i don't know all kinds of stuff but these are fantastic looking birds so i thought we would paint a uh, great blue heron today all right i'm going to start in a little different way than i normally do i'm going to start with the background this time <clears throat> and i'm going to do that because i want to get in with my flat brush and preserve all of these big long feathers on his uh, on his neck here and coming off the back of his head. The best way I can do that with a big flat brush. So let me pull my palette over a little bit. I'm gonna get started. Let's see. I'm gonna mix up a little kind of a bluish gray here. And I'm gonna warm that with a little bit of my brown color. I'm going to mix them in a little bit. Something like that. This color kind of reminds me of this color behind him on the water. So we'll switch back and forth between these blues, between those browns. And we're going to go from there. Don't worry, we're going to get a completely different color of gray for, the, for him. This blue-gray that I like to use so much we're not going to use right now. Oops, let me see so you can see. And I'm just going to block on some of this. Get it a little thicker than I want to, but we'll just thin it down a little bit right here. There we go. I want to block that on, and I'm going to start by putting it right around his head here. Okay. And somehow, if I can do this, <laughs> I knew this was going to be tough. I'm going to block out a couple of these little feathers there. I don't even know what those feathers are called. But they're extremely neat to see. This whole bird is really neat. There we go. I might have to come back a little bit with a, a little bit of white up here and and fix those up just a, a little bit. I'm going to let them go the way they are just for right now. There we go. What am I doing? I'm trying to use the very tip of that brush and that's not how I use a flat brush. There we go. Just lay it right on its side, so you can use the get the benefit of that whole big brush there. That's what we want to do. There we go. And we're going to set the tone for this bird right here. I'm going to lighten this up a little bit. I don't know if you can see my palette I'm working with. Let me try and pull that in a little bit. Here we go. Trying to look up to see the picture on my camera as I do this. I've had lots of requests <clears throat> to try and uh, make the visual up there on my camera a little better. I thought I think it was bad. But I realized sometimes the image was a little small, maybe, or um, you know, maybe it was the color wasn't as good as it could have been. I'm trying to fix that a little bit. So when I think I can zoom in a little bit, I'm going to try and zoom in, Oops. let you guys see a little bit of what I'm doing. Right here, I'm just 
actually just making some there we go making some V's and then I'm going to kind of paint on the open side of those something like that and if I've done it right I should have a couple of lines in there let's see as I come down here I want to mix in a little of this brown maybe not quite that much we'll just go back like this that's going to be good I don't know if you hear it as you paint watercolors I always hear oh watercolors are so unforgiving when you make a mistake, you're done. You can't, you can't do anything wrong in watercolors. And I always say, I don't understand that. Watercolors are alive. They're, they're vibrant. They move all over. They do all kinds of things. Yes, sometimes they're frustrating. Yes, sometimes they don't do exactly what we want. But I'm betting you get that same thing whether you're doing oils or acrylics or whatever you even if it's a craft that you're doing I bet you get that same kind of thing it just happens as you're painting and I'm gonna kinda of put my bird standing on a little something here I'm gonna let that green run up a little bit. I'm not going to define exactly where that green starts and ends. And I'm going to put a little bit of this yellow down here. And I hope that yellow brings that green closer to us a little bit. I'm going to get back into my blue up here before this gets too hard of an edge. I am using a, a fair amount of water on this so I do have a little bit of time to get in here and do whatever I want. There we go. And I'm just gonna let that come down and touch this green that's going to come up and it's going to play happily together at least that's the hope over here and this is just gonna fade off into the background there we go that's not too bad I kinda like that All right, I'm back. I forgot to secure my picture up here when I started the hair dryer. It blew all over the place. All right, so a couple of things. I kind of like the way this looks all modeled through here. And the, the yellow did help to bring this uh, the foreground here even closer to us. I'm kind of happy with that. I, I do like the way this looks totally modeled back here. 
here's my big fear with always doing the background first. If I don't have that edge set just right, when I go to paint this bird, I might get a weird edge around there. But it's too late now. We're going to forge ahead. And we're going to see what happens. All right, so I'm going to mix up a gray. And I'm going to use all my blues, a little bit of Payne's gray. Oh, you can't see. All right, I'm using, uh, let's see, uh, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue. I am going to use my Payne's gray. I've dipped in a little bit of my uh yellow over here, uh, not my lemon yellow, this is my cad yellow, and I'm going to put in just a bit of this red, and it should give me this beautiful gray, and it does, it's not quite as dark and rich as I had hoped for, so I'm going to add to it just a little bit, just a little bit of red, that looks good, and I'm going to augment that with just a touch of my yellow. That's a gray I like. Of course, blue and yellow and red, when you mix them together, they will make your own gray. So the Payne's gray just helps to uh, intensify that a little bit. All right, so let's see. Where to start first? I'm going to make sure my brush is good and rinsed, and I'm going to get his head wet up here, everything but his eye and his beak. I'm just gonna get that wet right around. I hope you can see. Here we go. There, there, there. Looking good, looking good. And I'm doing this because his head is fairly white, fairly light up there. But the rest of him is really, um, not dark, but much darker, I guess I should say. I think that's far, plenty far enough. I'm not going to go any further than that anyways. So I want to make sure that when I put this color on, it'll run up towards his head. But I don't want it necessarily to go all the way up there. I want some of it to stay down here, right down here. I'm actually going to give this a little extra blue. Whichever blue I choose doesn't matter. There we go with the doesn't matter stuff again. But it doesn't. Your eye's going to register that as gray against that blue background. And you'll see, when you look at it, you'll go, oh, it's a, it's a gray bird. Actually, I want to give him a little bit more blue. That's a bit gray. I know it's going to lighten up. There we go. Going to give him a little bit down there. He's got a little bit of color. A little bit of this brown right in through here. And I'm going to get a rigger, I think. What do I have, a number two? Do I have something smaller than a number two? Nope. I'm going to get a number two, and I'm going to thin this way down. And I'm going to pull some of this out. Right down there. If it's straight, it's straight. If it's not, it'll be just off of that white, but that white's going to help us. It's still going to help us. I'm going to take a little bit of our brown here. I'm going to pull right off the back of his head in a couple of different lines here. There we go. Uh, I'm going to get a kind of an orangey yellow real quick while his head is still wet. Yellowy orange, I guess I should call it. It's going to be much more yellow. That orange. And I want to put that in here. 
just while we're up in this area we'll just toss it in there hey we're in the area let's do it we'll just drop his beak in there let's see it was kind of like this but when it gets back around his eye it turns into this blue gray again so I'm just gonna drop in some of that blue gray right around his eye I know I've gotten a little quiet I'm trying to be a little careful there we go I like that I need to go back over his uh, feathers up here on the top and darken that up his his neck here is lightening up a little bit that's that's good for us I'm going to wet some of the rest of his back here that gray's quite a bit lighter up there it's still there and when it gets down here to this line it's going to get quite a bit darker on us so while we're up there and it's nice and light, just a, just I'm just gonna give it some color up here. There we go, real light. Let it come down. I think I'm gonna end up going back and drawing in some feathering up here. Let's see. As we get back here, his tail gets a little bit darker back there there we go I'll go nice and down right under here it's gonna get nice and dark let's keep that just down underneath something like that let's see pull that back that way there we go I'm gonna mix a little bit more this cerulean blue in there. I really like the cerulean blue. Wow, that's way too much. Way too much. I'm going to end up trying to mix some of that out. If it's going to be that strong, i got to put some in somewhere else to counteract that. But that's much stronger than I wanted. We'll work with it. Let's see. I'm going to give him a little bit of brown down in his tail. I don't really think he has it down there. That's okay. Here we go. He's got some nice color coming on him now. Right down here. He is pretty white on the bottom. And then his tail down here has got quite a bit of dark on it. I'm going to come back there. Let's see. Darker. There we go. Right underneath these feathers. I think we're going to end up coming back and uh, having to put a little detail in up here which is totally fine you know what I forgot to put a background in back there between his legs well let's mix some, some of his leg color right now I'm gonna use this orange that we use for his beak I'm gonna mix a little brown in with it and I'm gonna grab his leg his front leg Pull straight down, right down to his foot. And his back leg, I want to have a little bit lighter, a little bit different. So I'm not going to do that quite yet. I'll paint on his feet down here. I'll do both feet. There we go. 
nice big foot there for us. I'm going to get a slightly smaller brush. I've got a whole box of brushes over here. Here we go. I'm going to use this one. I don't know what this one is. This is a Princeton brush. And I'm going to try and make this just a bit lighter. So it'll look kind of like it's in the back. There we go. And it does. It looks like it's behind. All I need to do now is try to replicate that color that was in between. And I can drop some of that in. Maybe I should let those dry first. That's probably a good idea. While I'm doing that, I'm going to get a tiny little brush. This is a number one. I'm going to paint his eye in. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not getting any yellow. It's hard to get with paint with these little tiny brushes. Turn this all the way upside down. I'm just going to fill in his eye. Let's see, I'm going to get back to my liner here. I'm going to get a little bit of this dark color and I'm going to hope to paint in. While I'm waiting for everything else, I'm going to hope to paint in some of the lines between his feathers. He's got a lot of them here. And I think I'm going to paint in. Oh! I'm going to paint in some of the some of these ones just to strengthen them just a bit. And if you want to at the top you can you can blend those in if you want to up here. I think I've got just a bit of a strong value there. There we go. We're done with it. Let's see, I got a few more to do back here. He's got these things that come off almost all the way down, these giant feathers. Almost all the way down his body. And really, how do I do this? They cover his back. all the way up to the top up here. I'm just going to vary the color on this, or I'm trying to vary the color on this a little bit. Before I get carried away too much, I want to soften the ends of these. Just some of them, just a bit. And now almost dry, totally almost dry. And I'm gonna pull up, pull up, pull up. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Pull up that way. There, there, there. All right, that leg is still wet. I'm gonna come in down here. Let's see, I'm gonna put in some feathers kind of go like this I want to give this bird a little bit of roundness here this has got a little bit to him I know flipping this page quite a bit he's got kind of a kind of dark underneath here so I kind of want to give that little line to where that's at. Alright, he's got some feathers down here, some bigger feathers down here. I'm going to give a little bit of shape to these. There we go. We don't have to give a lot, just the indication. 
And on the bottom side down here, he's got what looks like a few that come up this way to meet. There we go. Now his now his wing looks round. Where it didn't necessarily before. Now it totally looks round there. Let's see, I want to give him a little bit of color right under his chin. I don't think he has it on the picture necessarily. But I want to give him a little bit. I want that to come up a little bit. Come on, rinse out. There we go. I want to give a little bit of definition to his head right there. I've still got to put in these are make these a little bit darker. Pull that out. There we go. That's pulled out nicely. Where's my background color you can touch this up ever so slightly it's not the exact color I missed my opportunity for that but it's going to be close enough when it dries and you look at it you'll never remember it wasn't exactly right so he's got some detail here on his legs. I'm just going to scribble a little bit in there. And he's got some lining on his beak. And a black spot right up here for his nose. Here we go. This little brush, I always get a lot of water right on the ferrule. It makes it tough. There we go. Now his eye wouldn't be right if he wasn't staring at something. So I'm going to give him a pupil right there. And I'm going to make his eye a little bit darker just behind it hope you can see that just behind his eye I've gone and made it just a bit darker and whoop, there we go and with that we're just about done with this one I see my time is running short I'm going to try a little something here in the foreground. I just want to put in a little dark as though he's kind of standing here. He's not kind of without a shadow. He's got a shadow here. So we need to give him a little bit of a shadow. Okay, I'm back. I heard the camera blip off as I was painting in our shadow here where he's standing. And here it is. Standing just there. Now he's planted on the ground. You can see that he's planted on the ground. Let me do this a little bit. You can see a little bit better, maybe, maybe. Pull this back out just ever so slightly I can see I just want to take a little bit of that out and I think we're going to call that one good so here he is my blue heron as opposed to this blue heron standing mine is standing on the grass but he looks beautiful he's got these beautiful long feathers on his back he's got nice roundness to his body thanks to this uh, part of his wing here 
We've got some feather definition down here, and he just looks majestic just standing there. So there it is, my blue heron. Thank you for watching. I appreciate the view. Uh, subscribe to my channel. That way we can paint uh, together another time. I would love that. And uh, have a good night. Thank you.